Hello, is this working? Yeah. All right, my, my name is Nathan Brackett. I'm the executive editor of Rolling Stone, and uh, we have somebody who needs no introduction. People say that a lot, but uh, it really applies here. I'll try anyway, though. Uh, he's an artist, environmental activist, uh, startup uh, founder now, uh, a painter recently, and uh, a lot of other things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Neil Young. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Great to be here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you want to sit down? Uh, so let's, um, let's, let's talk about first why you're, why you're here at CES this year. Well, uh, to, you know, we're launching Pono, and uh, we've, got our, we've got our player uh, now available. We have our website finished, and, uh, it's not, and our music server finished. Uh, high-res music server, the best music that you can get uh, anywhere in the world. <laughs> right, right. The right. best sounding music. Right, right. And uh, that's, that's what this whole thing's about. It's right. Just, it's just about the music. It's just about making music sound as good as it can. Right. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to start a little bit at a few, a few decades ago. and about how your thinking has evolved with digital music. Because I remember you saying it you know, years ago that you were, you were a big fan of, at, early on you were excited about the compact disc and the possibilities of it. And then obviously over, you know, that's changed. Can you, talk, can you just take us through, you know, maybe start somewhere in the 80s about when this, these new formats were coming and about how your thinking has grown? 1982 is when, it, is when the CD actually started to make a dent. And, uh, and you know, everybody was impressed with uh, the marketing, that, it, uh, that it, didn't, uh, it didn't have all the clicks and pops and surface noises and everything of the, uh, of the uh, album. And we were quite impressed with that. And the fact you could play it really loud and it wouldn't feed back your turntable. Uh, was also quite impressive to a lot of people. Uh, but very shortly after the initial buzz, we started to realize, well, okay, this hurts. What? Uh, when you play it back really loud, it really hurts. I mean, you can't do this over and over again. And a lot of, uh, a lot of us who used to make records at that time were used to listening really loud because analog has so much dynamic range that when it hits you, it hits you with a full envelope of dynamics. Not all the sounds are, are sort of in the same neighborhood. They're coming slow, you know, from way back there and then hitting you in the face and everywhere in between all the time. So uh, like, uh, like anything that the body goes through, I mean, if uh, you ask any long distance runner who's trained by running on asphalt, pretty soon now every step to being the same, it hurts your body. So that's what happened to people's ears. All these sounds at the same level started hurting them. And this is something you noticed in the studio or just as a listener? I mean, I remember some of those early CDs were really hard to listen to. Yeah, I mean, they're brutal. The so, um, yeah, no, I noticed it in the studio because I used to mix and I do a lot of work in the studio. Um, and uh, it started to hurt. And I was going, you know, I'm fatiguing here. I don't know why. I'm, I've never done this before. And it's because I was listening to a, uh, uh, I had a Sony multi-track at the time. Uh, and that's what we were mixing from, and then we weren't listening to a CD while we were in the studio. We were making one, so, but we were coming from a digital uh, multi-track, and that's when I noticed it. Uh, and uh, so I started to turn on the CD at, at an early time and started realizing that my records sounded better than CDs, but realized also the marketing for the CD. Uh, you know, and it wasn't as stark of a difference, but now we've slipped even further. I mean, I've watched... Uh, while everything else has gotten better in uh, you know, movies, and although there is a school of thought that the old, uh, that the old film is actually more uh, rewarding to watch than the digital, which is impressive. Uh, you know, the digital is a, is a reconstitution of the image or the sound, and the, and the analog uh, counterpart would be a reflection. So the reflection and the mirror reflection is more pleasing because it still has all of the variety. Nothing has been, has been uh, uh, 
uh, averaged out. Well, with film, it's a little softer too. I mean, the yeah. analog. I mean, it's. It, well, know. it's a, it's a really it's all the same thing. It's just a film. You can see it. People understand film. Uh, uh, they can see it, uh, and, and it gives them a representation. The digital is extremely sharp and clear, but that's because it's averaged, and there's little. Each pixel is different. There, there's nothing. I mean, each pixel is one thing. You know, and uh, so it gives you sharp lines. So you get sharp lines also in the music, but that's not, music doesn't work like that. Music is, uh, the, the ears are the window to the soul, so you, you have to feel, and uh, music makes you feel. Good music, uh, well represented and well recorded, makes you feel. You have goosebumps, you have, you'll cry, you have a visceral reaction, and that's what has been missing. And of course now we're in a uh, downward spiral. It has is, is got to end somewhere. And, uh, and I'm hoping that it's going to end with the, uh, wait, this not supposed to be get this out of my pocket, but it's in my pocket. I, I'm hoping that, that we can end the downward spiral with this, uh, with, with devices that do what this device does. This is only our first, uh, this, this is a representation of what Pono is. This is a, uh, a player that does everything that, uh, that it's supposed to do. But we're going to make this uh, technology and the way to make this technology just public. Anybody can do this that wants to do it. And if they want to, if they want to do it and they want to get certified by us, then we will review what they did and tell them, our, our engineers will tell them, yes, you did it right. You did what we told you to do and you used the right components and uh, you built it into your phone or you built it into another player or into a stereo system or whatever you did. And this is Pono, so we're going to certify you. Well, and if you want to use the brand, then we'll be licensing you. So uh, it's not a conventional approach. We're trying to be uh, more open with it. We'd like to basically uh, start a community of, of music lovers worldwide who are part of the, uh, the Pono movement, which just brings music back to where it can be and restores the art form to what it could be so that future generations will be able to hear Today's classics, you know, by Adele and different people like that, and great, great musicians that are out there, um, in a way that that is uh, representative of what the music really is, instead of having a museum full of MP3 clones of something. You know. Can you tell me a little more about backing up a little bit more about you know, the the different formats that people tried? I mean, you you were involved with the. DVD audio, I believe. I mean, we tried, at, we tried at a lot of things. Point. Like what? Yeah. Well, what? How, how did we get to this point too with digital? Okay. I mean, were, well, there, were there different places where you thought things could go in a different direction? Well, I always wanted to go as far up as I could, and that was, you know, I wanted it to be as good as it could be. That was what I've always wanted for my music and for my music listeners, and for everybody's music and for all of their listeners. So, when the CD was uh, was the standard. Uh, we started realizing a DVD audio, uh, DVD was capable of doing much more than the CD. And it was another disc, so what's the difference? You know, you get a DVD player instead of a CD player. But somewhere along the line, the, uh, uh, some people made some big mistakes and decided that DVD audio was going to be 5-1, and it was going to be like music surround right. sound. Right. And that didn't work because um, every house, almost, almost every house, is run by a woman. Okay, that didn't work. It, you don't. What are these boxes in my living room? This is no good. This, I, it was just the most simple, basic screw up. Anybody speaking ever as someone who has tried to implement a 5.1 audio yeah. solution in his home, I can, I can, I can agree. A, yeah, give me, yeah. A, give me a break. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got nice yeah. furniture here. You know, I can right. put these boxes in here. You know, right. I can handle two speakers. I'm used right. to that. I've accepted that in the past. Right. But this right. is not it. So you it's a furniture. To stand where to furniture to stood in the way. That's what it was. <laughs> furniture was in the way of, of audio. Right. So DVD, bang, flop. And there was SAC, Bummer. Bummer. SACD. Audio. SACD. That was a good. That was a good try. Right. Unfortunately, it's only limited to Sony. So that's no good. You can't have one record company having one thing and another record company's not having. It. So that wasn't going to catch on because it's only one kind of artist can have it. An artist that signed with Sony or Columbia or whatever it was. So, so that didn't work either. And it wasn't because it was bad. 
It wasn't as good as it could have been, but it was better than what we had. And that was a great effort. And, uh, and Pono uh, is going to be playing back those files. Uh, we're, just, uh, we're just doing that right now. But, uh, um, I mean, isn't, I mean, Blu-ray. There's, there's Blu-ray. We took a step further with Blu-ray. I put all my archives in, in 192.24, uh, on, which is the highest resolution level that you can have uh, today. And not tomorrow, but today. And, and, and we can play that back, and that's what Blu-ray played back. So I put out my whole archives like that, and it was great. It sounded great. But you have to have a Blu-ray player, and then you've got to clunk around looking at the screen, what do you choose next, and do all this. It's very clunky. Not a musical experience that you can carry around in your pocket. So this device, where Blu-ray was 192, DVD was probably 96 or 48 or something, at some lower number because of the 5.1. Uh, furniture problem, they did that. But, but this device is the mother of all formats. There is no format for, for Pono. Pono will play back anything you put into it. It'll recognize it for what it is and play it back at the absolute highest quality it can be played back at. It's designed by a master of audio uh, and acoustics, a genius that, that absolutely had the best sounding player. I listened to all the technologies that I could out there. I reviewed all of them, and my own personal opinion is that this is the best. And uh, everybody who's reviewed this player, even against the uh, uh, players that cost sometimes almost three times as much, this player wins. It only does one thing. It doesn't open my car garage. It doesn't, uh, I can't call my girlfriend and say I'm gonna be leaving at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. I can't do any of those things, but I can play great sounding music and it'll satisfy me like my original vinyl did. Some of our users uh, in the Pono community on our website where we have our downloads and our ability to download from the cloud and then load into your player. Uh, some of our users on our community, which we have, um, uh, which is a Salesforce community, uh, the Salesforce cloud community. We have, uh, so we have the only music store that has interactive community uh, um, uh, what you call it, a, uh, that feature to it, so that people can talk about the music and the artists and what they're listening to and what they want to buy and talk about it, like they're in a store talking to somebody. And so we have all of that and we sell all the music there and it's kind of cool. It's a new thing. I mean, you, you've talked a little bit in the past about who you, who you think is gonna purchase Pono, real music lovers, people who are serious about music already and care yeah. about sound. I mean, what about, what, what about everybody else? I mean, the, I think the average person could walk around the CES floor and see the difference between a 4K TV and even a 720 or 1080p HD TV. Would they, are, you know, is the average person gonna be able to hear the difference? I mean, audio is a little tougher. Are they, are they gonna be able to hear the difference between a pretty good sounding CDs? And you know, CD sound has gotten better since you know, the dark days of the 80s. And, and Pono, I mean, is it, can, what about the, the rest of the world, I guess, is what I'm asking. Uh, you know, the good thing about the rest of the world is, is that they can do what they would like to do. They can, they, can, they can listen to whatever kind of music they want to listen to. And music lovers always want to hear the best that they can hear. If they have a chance to compare, freedom of choice, is very important part of freedom of choice is the ability to choose based on knowledge. You know, not just, well, I'll take that one and this one and this one, but I didn't know what they are, let's see what they are. But to go back in and go, well, I listened to these two things and I really like this one, and I don't care that much for that one. So when you make a choice based like that, we played, uh, we played Pono uh, in a car for uh, about 100 artists from Springsteen to Portugal Le Mans to from Elton John to Nora Jones, from all of these artists up and down the spectrum, from Metallica to, uh, to uh, wait a minute, is this on? <laughs> so anyway, no, uh, the idea is the, all these artists went, oh my God, you know, we had this thing and in in it was called a revealer. Uh, we were gonna put it on the player, but I decided not to. But it, it allows you to compare the same song and go from 192 to 96 to, to 88 to 44 to 
MP3 and go back and forth between them and just push the button and the song doesn't ever stop, it just changes quality. Every musician, you know, would blind whatever way they did it, they all went to 192. Only scientists didn't go to 192. They thought 96 was what anybody could hear because they analyzed it. So we went to uh, the record companies and we went to different people who were saying only 96. And I, well, if it's only 96, why did the musicians all choose 192? Who cares about science? It's right. music. Right. You know, we're well, talking about how do you feel it? What's, that's not science. Right. Right. That's not numbers. Well, I mean, you touched on that with the, the, the yeah, the, what scientists say and, and also, uh, I mean, the, the fact is that probably since the launch of the iPod, you know, most listeners have settled for MP3s. I call it yeah. the drop of the iPod, not the launch. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Is there, a, is, is there any like, bit rate to you that like an MP3 is acceptable? Is there? Yeah, great. You can recognize what song you're listening to. <laughs> it's fantastic. You can pick any song out of your library and instantly recognize it, and it matches the title on your player. Right. right. And, I think that's great. That's technology. It's been a, they did a great job with that. And it's fun. Hey, music is fun. You know, this is not a serious thing. So music is, music is great. I love music. If people can't hear the difference between an MP3 and a, and a high resolution file or a Pono file, I say, bless you. You know, you're, you're doing great right now. You and, don't have and, to have anything else. And in fairness, I mean, you, you've, I think you've written about, you know, listening to music as a kid on your you know, tinny yeah. record player. I mean, that, but the that source, is, you're not saying that's illegitimate. No, uh, yeah. I'm saying that that rocks. The source was great. That's what matters about when you're listening. If you have a pure source, which vinyl was, when I was listening on the little piece of crap record player I had, and I threw a six inch speaker as loud as I could play it, and sitting in front of it with my head stuck almost down the speaker, then I, I was hearing the quality that was coming off the vinyl. It was distorted because of my player and everything was happening, but in the original thing, it sounded like God. It was a reflection of a real thing. So that's, that's, that's why nothing matters but the source. If you put bad things in between, like for instance, a great example is today's car radios or car stereo systems. If you, a lot of them, if you, plug that, if you plug something into them, they resample it. Even though they already have an analog output and they're getting an analog input, they'll put it through their sampling. So all the work that we would do to make something sound great, they do over again for as cheaply as possible. So that's one of the things that's happened. And, and it doesn't affect MP3s because they sound terrible anyway. But when you have something like Pono, we, 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 we've figured out a way to go around that. We don't, go, we don't go through all of that. As soon as you go into the system and recognize, oh my God, this is great. This is the best. Don't do any of the things to fix it. Stop doing that. Turn all of that off and go right to the other end and come out. Don't convert it. Don't, don't process it. Don't do anything. Just go right from here all the way to here. And leave all the stuff you needed for the MP3 out of the picture. So that's simple, that's technology. We just eliminated all of the progress that was made for the last 20 years. What? <laughs> can, you, can you talk Felt about- Felt good, too. <laughs> can, can you talk about the, the kind of how you, the kind of the first stages, your journey of actually starting Pono as a company? And like, I mean, you, yeah. you, uh, didn't you at one point, weren't you talking to Steve Jobs actually? About yeah, I talked, I talked with Steve a lot about, uh, you know, and I wouldn't say a lot, that's, that's an exaggeration. Especially uh, someone as great as Steve. You don't want to be taking advantage of, of that. But he, he, uh, he loved music and he, and he had a, a really good, you know, uh, phonograph system in his living room listening to vinyl. I'd heard that, and, and, and that's it, okay. Just sit, think about that for a minute. And I, I read in the New York Times actually he wouldn't let his kids uh, use their iPhones at home. Well, he either. knew. Yeah, yeah. He told me he said it's a consumer product. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm surprised at how many people went for it, the music on the iPod. We we made it like another feature of the iPod. You know. And everything in the iPod has got this consumer level bump to it. You can only get so good and it stops. 
And it's great. You can recognize the movie you're looking at. You can recognize the song you're hearing. Uh, you can actually read this little page and everything's good. You can zoom in, zoom out. You know, it's great. <laughs> but it's not music. It's not music. That, it's a dedicated, little, it's a player that play, does everything uh, kind of okay. What about vinyl? I mean, that it's grown by, you know, maybe tenfold in the last 10 it years. It shows the need. It shows the need. It's the only place people can go where they can really hear, that they actually can buy a record player, maybe an old one or a new one, plus they got the whole wealth of cheap recordings that are available in, in uh, you know, record barns around the country, that they can get all these obsolete discs and put them on the record player and they still sound good if they're lucky. And, and uh, you know, vinyl is great, but the reason why vinyl is become popular is because people want to hear. It, and uh, also, of course, there's the artwork and the big thing you got and everything in the tangible of it. But uh, our listeners at Pono, we have a, on our community, are talking about vinyl like vinyl and Pono. You know, the high-res Pono is like vinyl. Vinyl is like the high-res Pono. And we're going, you mean you think of vinyl as, you think this is better than vinyl? And some people would say, yeah, we think it is. And others would, would say, I don't know. It's, you know. But to us, we didn't ask. We just waited. People came up and said, this sounds better than vinyl. I don't think it can sound better than vinyl. Because vinyl is a reflection, and any digital is a reconstitution. It's not the same thing. But it sounds as great as vinyl, as, as, as digital can sound, and vinyl sounds like vinyl. If you play it back clearly, it's great. So this, it's not like it's apples and oranges. It's two different things. Do you listen to vinyl much? I listen to Pono most of the time, but when I listen to vinyl, I can tell the difference. And I love vinyl, and I love Pono. Pono being so portable and having all of the convenience of, uh, of the iPod and everything before that makes it uh, a huge winner for today. There's just no way you can change the whole lifestyle of America to go back to lugging around CD, you know, big discs. That's not going to happen. So being able to have the music the best it can be in your pocket and uh, well, actually goes in and out of your pocket. I heard this wouldn't fit. That's why I wanted to, I brought it up there in my pocket to demonstrate. You can verify it. Yeah. It's in your pocket. Yes. <laughs> um, and then in the last year, uh, uh, there have been a couple uh, HD streaming services. Have you had a chance to check them out? Tidal, uh, Sonos does well, a little Deezer. HD uh, is like natural or? food. <laughs> what is natural food? I don't know. What is HD? I don't know what it is. It's a name people call things. It's not certified organic. You know, it's not USDA certified or whatever it is. It's, it's, the, HD is, is, if you can stream it and it sounds better than an MP3, that doesn't make it MP, that doesn't make it HD. In my book, HD is high definition. And high definition is not lossy. Or not, uh, yeah, not lossy. It's, uh, it, it's a clear, clear image. That's what HD should be. But it's been hijacked as a marketing term, so I can't answer your question because I don't listen to streaming because it sounds like shit to me, so I don't, I don't know anything about it. And uh, when it comes to me, and, and there are some coming that have compression schemes that say that they can play it back, they can play back, you know, compress down the high-res files and play them back and have them sound big again. I'm sure they do sound big, but I don't think they sound like they did in the first place. So I'm about preserving the quality. Memory's not a problem. Why not have all of it? I'm saying this is what the artist did. Give us what the artist did. If you want to have more player or more music in your player and you think that it makes sense to have your player only play back like 48K because all of the files have been reduced to 48K and that's the new high res is less than the real high res. If you want to go that way and have maybe a few more songs on your player, um, then, then that's fine. But I believe in the real thing. 
I believe in quality all the way as far as you can go, everywhere you can go. There's nothing holding us back anymore. Memory is not a problem. This is holding like uh, a thousand songs right now, and uh, it's not full. So what's the big deal? I mean, I go back to my computer and add a few more songs, take away, maybe some kooky uh, artist decided to go all environmental, and I'm not listening to them anymore. But take them off my That would never off. happen. Take them off. Okay, I want to Todd Rundgren drag, back on yeah. this thing. Oh. Um. <laughs> It's got to be fun. If it's not fun, it's not worth doing. And music is about having a, a good time feeling your soul, whether it makes you laugh or it makes you cry, just so long as you feel as much as you can. That's the mission of Pono. That's why we're sharing all of our technology with anybody who wants to make anything. If we certify it as being Pono, we'll show you how to do it. Any manufacturer that wants, wants to make this kind of quality, we'll show you how to do it. We, we worked for a long time, started back in 2000 working on this, uh, talking to, with my friend Mark Benioff, and I said, you know, we got to, must be a way to use the cloud and to use all of these things and to, to, to bring music to a new level, back to where it was a long time ago, and, and bring digital up to where, uh, to the realm that analog had attained. We must be able to do this. Uh, technology is supposed to be an, a, an enabler, it's supposed to improve life, and it's the 21st century, and why do we keep spiraling down with musical quality with all these little, uh, you know, like what, Ponderosa or whatever it's called, who knows, Pandora, yeah, what? <laughs> you know, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, I've heard it. I don't care, I'm not gonna be proud of it. I, I, I like the way good music sounds. That's why I'm doing this. It doesn't, nothing else matters. If, we, if other people can, can make this stuff, it's great. We supply the music. We put the music out there so people can use it. And you can use it on any player. It doesn't have to be our player. We don't want to have our little IP stamp on this file that says, oh, this is our file, and you've got to pay us a percentage every time. No, this music belongs to everybody. It was made by the artists sold through the record companies. If the record companies allow it and the artists allow it, this will play back the highest resolution possible. This opens the gate to the, what the artists did at the highest possible resolution. And there's just, you know, you'd make the choice. Do you want to use it or not? I heard actually on a side thing that it wouldn't be a big thing for Apple just to make the iPhone effectively able to play a Pono quality you know, file. It wouldn't great. be a bit, but they just don't. They've chosen not well, to. Well, so far they've chosen not to. The beauty of this whole project is all we're doing is saying, hey, listen, it could be a lot better. The music world could be a lot better. And the music world has taken a huge dump. So maybe there's a connection. <laughs> maybe. I'm just, I'm not saying there is. <laughs> so if Apple decided to do this, you know, maybe they do their own version, maybe they want to do this version, maybe we Pono certify their players or whatever. Whatever they want to do, it's a home run for music. Unless they screw it up and try to put something else on it and make it something that it isn't so that they can own it, I'm calling that out for what it is. That doesn't make, it doesn't matter. You know, vinyl records were vinyl records, analog tapes were analog tapes. They got, uh, they got reproduced and sent out to the public and everybody loved them. Then we had proprietary formats that came along. I'll put this away for that. Proprietary formats are not a, are not a good thing. They, don't, they, they put a ceiling on everything. You can only go up to that level and then you stop. This, you can go as high as you want to go. The mother of all formats right here. Digital from the original store, source instead of analog? Today? Like Pro Tools recording studios? Well, you know, it's an artist's choice. The artist has that available. They have 96K, they have a 48, they've got 192 available. They have everything available to make their choice. The, 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 the palette they want to work with and what kind of resolution they want to use, that's an artist's decision. It affects the sound, it affects the final product. This can play back whatever the artist decides to do. It's an artist's decision. It's part of the creation. It has nothing to do with Pono. 
Well, you've talked about, I mean, I think in the past, one of the issues with vinyl now is that a lot of vinyl, new vinyl records are just rips of CDs practically. Is there well, you there's, anything? Well, there's a lot to be said for that because a lot of people make records as that they're going to come out on a CD, so that's what they do, and they do that, and then they just put out a vinyl version of it. So you have to check, and if it's possible to find out, which sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, you can see that, oh, this is, this is a 1644 digital master that has been converted to vinyl, so it's really a fashion item. It's right. a, it's, The question was whether it's going to be a Pono music festival. Uh, all right. That's <laughs> a good idea. It's a valuable networking opportunity. Live music yeah. on Pono. Go, go to Bonnaroo and record everybody and then play it back. But, you know. When you, um, are you talked about talking to Steve Jobs, when did things, something switch like with Pono as far as your, how you got to this place? How, what, what was the, the most important thing in terms of making it a company? You talked to traditional investors. We know about the Kickstarter campaign. Can you talk a little bit about how the company actually came to be? Well, in the very beginning, uh, my, my friend and, uh, Mark Benioff and I were talking about, about music, like I mentioned this before, and we, we just constantly, we'd visit the, the Hawaiian Islands, and, and we, every time we went over there at the same time, we'd get together and we'd talk about it. And he encouraged me to keep on doing what I was doing, and, Right, to, and, and we talked and we figured out that the goal was, really the only goal was to make sure that music came, be, came out a lot better, that we took music up to where it was. And he said, he said, if you just stick with that goal and we just stay focused on that one thing and don't get distracted by all the other things, then, and you stay with it, uh, you, you may succeed. So, you know, 10 years later, we started, we started uh, around uh, 2010, 2011, we started trying to build the first player. And then I went through a lot of people trying to find the right technology to put in the player until I finally came up with this about 18 months ago and uh, settled on this. Well, when you got serious about it and you started dealing with you know, like the tech world, what was, your, what was that interface like? Well, you know, when you went around or either looking for investors oh, or talking investor about how to get world? it? Yeah. Oh, it was, a, it was a complete joke. I mean. <laughs> It was, it was, there are some very brilliant people out there, but they're, they're brilliant in their investment prowess. They can see what they want to do. Um, it's not about, this is not about a, a fast thing. It's not going to make you a hero next week to get behind Pono this week. But Pono is a long-term, slow reawakening, and this is the beginning of it. And, you know, it's not going to go away. People talk about it all the time because of, who knows? Because people like music. Some people really love music and they really want it to be great. So that's what keeps this going. It's not me, it's not any hype. I can't say, you can't describe music in a couple of words and get the point across. It, it is what it is. Just quality is all we care about. Not, I mean, quality of something you can feel in your soul. That's what we're looking for. You've talked about, uh, I think you said recently that the next decade for you you, you have, I mean, you have the, your link volt car, you have your activism, you have a lot of different things going. You talked about how the next decade for you might be primarily non-musical. Is that, would you st still say that? Uh, I can't really say that because I, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know much. I don't know much about the future. Um, I, don't, I don't really know where it's all going, but I, I do want to do this. And I want to continue playing music. And uh, I, I think that those two things should keep me pretty busy. I have some film editing and things to do on the side. Any more books planned? I'll probably be writing some books. I hope so, you know. So, you know, I just, uh, I want to keep doing what I do. I, w I would like to uh, be able to continue doing it for a long time. I'd like to see this in the hands of a lot of people. Not because I want to make a lot of money. It may not, the ones they have may not look like this. It may look like a phone, but it may have our technology inside of it. And it may be certified by, by us, or if they want to use our name, it may be licensed by us. But that's the goal, because the, in the end, that means everybody gets to hear the music. And to hear the music, you know, we've supplied the music. We have a place where you can put the music, where artists can put their music, record companies can put it, 
and you know everybody can put their music there and it's higher to resolution and then this player will pick it up and play it back and it goes it'll go around the world so that, that's what we want to do is make it possible for people to have what they want then when they make their choice it'll be truly from freedom of choice from knowledge of what's available you talked a little bit about going around to investors and then of course i mean i think you know, there are people saying, you know, investors, traditional investors who had their doubts, and then you, there was the Kickstarter campaign yeah. uh, last year. Can you talk a little bit about what that well, meant? Kickstarter just showed that, that people, music people, want this. But investors, they look at it and they go, well, this is just, you know, music's over. We, we're not interested in a music player. I mean, we're, we want a, a watch that I can control a trunk latch on my car. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. What can you do with that? You know? Here we are. How many trunk latch openers in your, do you have out there? Probably quite a few. The competition is stiff. It's stiff. <laughs> but music, music is music. I mean, everybody loves music. Some people love it more than others. Some people can't live without it. Some people don't care about it. They're tone deaf and they don't, they're not interested. The thing is, if you love it, this will give it to you. This gives it to you the way it is. And, uh, and, that's, and then you feel it. And feeling is really what this is all about. So if this, if this little device, or the, and especially our music store, uh, starts something, and it's Pono, and it's a Pono community of music lovers around the world that are just looking for Pono quality, no matter what brand is presenting it, uh, no matter what it, w where it's coming from or where it's going, if it says Pono on it, it should be uh, to the level of the things that I'm talking about. It goes through our provenance, it goes through all of our research to make sure that the tracks are not like, they haven't been double sampled to make them have higher numbers so that you fake people out thinking they're getting something they, you know, they're, they're not getting. And we, we go, th our tracks go through a, a program that checks and makes sure that they are what they say they are because some other companies have had trouble with that. But it's, it, it's, it's a growing thing. It's a, it's a burgeoning uh, exercise in regaining uh, the quality of, uh, of a certain thing. You know, that's what we're doing. What, what's, what's next for Pono? What's the next? When is the player actually going to be available? Player's available. Uh, there's 20,000 of them in circulation right now. Um, we're making more next year. Um, we're taking orders for more. I think our first order is pretty well sold out. We're taking into the next thing. Uh, we're having, you know, we're getting more orders than we have players. And, uh, and we have more orders than we have venture capitalists. So, you know, no one's really interested in rescuing an art form when you could open the trunk of your car from your wrist. <laughs> And I have to ask, what's, uh, what, what are your plans for the next year? Do you have any albums? I'm going to keep coming? doing this and doing this. I'm working on another album now that I'm going to be doing with uh, Willie Nelson's uh, sons. Yeah, it's going to be called the Monsanto Years. After, after the, 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 food, the food company? It's uh, an upbeat yeah. review of the situation. <laughs> the feel-good hit of the summer. Is that... <laughs> That's right. Yeah, right. Go get yourself a hot dog and listen to this. <laughs> no. You have to. You have to go. No. You have to go make a digital file of your record through any one of the of the hack beats or whatever that you have. The question was whether you can record directly onto a player. Yeah. 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 No, you can't. Um, and uh, any uh, touring plans? Touring any plans, no. Crazy horse, any? Uh, no, I might you know, do it. You have to ask these questions. I did a tour last year called Honor the Treaties that went across Canada to try to help the Ar Aboriginal First Nations tribes to uh, uh, enforce their treaty rights in the Constitution of Canada, which would stop, you know, the oil in the, uh, in the Alberta tar sands area because the Indians all have control over that, yet they've been, you know. So I did my thing to raise money to help them defend themselves. And if I do anything this year, I might do that again um, uh, when, in a bigger way because it, you know, at first it, uh, it succeeded, but it succeeded more than a lot of the artists I was trying to get thought it would. So now maybe if we do it again, we'll get more artists. 
But uh, you know, that kind of thing's interesting. At this point, uh, it's, it's interesting to try to do something meaningful and to try to make some, some sort of a difference because uh, I've attained a certain level, which I feel now a responsibility to use uh, for positive things rather than just, you know, getting my name in People magazine or something, you know. I didn't say any other magazines. <laughs> I, well, I, <laughs> I didn't say well, that. Did I, I say that? Is my mic on? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, I actually, well, here's a related question. Now, I mean, you, you are uh, an equipment you know, manufacturer now. No, I, we're not. <laughs> we're not. This is a temporary situation. We want other people to make this. We would love someone else to make this player, and we'd love to enable other people to make players. We'll share the technology, and once we review what you've built, if we say you did it right, then you're Pono. And then, uh, you know, we'll sell the music, and we'll make sure the music is right. So it's a worldwide commitment to improving the sound of music. Most of the digital music, you, you have the mastering and all these things, and what catalog are the people going to have as a choice? I love the idea of freedom of choice, and thank you for doing that step for us, but what, you know, what commitment, how can we help getting the music industry, bringing these treasures of music to the porno technology? Well, we're doing that. We have 2 million 100 and something thousand uh, songs available on Pono now that are all from the major labels. And uh, our, our quality goes from 44.1 up. And there's much more at 44.1 at the CD level than there is at the higher level for obvious reasons. A lot of the masters were made for 44.1. Many of them can be rescued and made higher quality. And that's one of our main pushes with the record companies is to, okay, let's upgrade this. You have an analog master of this classic, like uh, Thriller or something by Michael Jackson. It's available in 96. Let's take it, let's re-record it to 192 and make it available for everybody. So we're always pushing all the record companies to raise the bar and to sell the quality that they have. And, uh, and that is, uh, that's what we do. But we are doing well. Uh, we, have, we are just starting to ingest now all of the independent labels and we've, we've, we are continuing to ingest uh, material from the, from the commercial labels, from the big three, Universal, uh, uh, Sony, and Warner Brothers. So we are uh, uh, we're doing what it is that, that you're saying, and it's available on ponomusic.com, and that's where you go to buy it. Once you get one of these players, you can download it. You can sync up your player and download the music right into your player and take it with you. No, the, 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 what the player, the player will play anything, but what Pono Music sells is FLAC files, FLAC files at any resolution available. We make it the highest resolution available and we've chosen FLAC. The question was, was there any difference, just for people who didn't hear, between the Pono format and FLAC and audio quality, yeah. No, you can play back other, other you know, FLAC or WAVE or whatever, you can play back other things on this, but you can't, uh, uh, we, you can't buy anything other than flack on the store. That's what we sell. And we believe in it. We listen to it. it Pono is a Hawaiian word for righteous, the one, the original, the essence. <laughs> well, this is turned into a bit of an informal Q&A. We'll take one more question from the audience and then yeah. uh, and start to wrap it up. the sound of the music. Uh, are you encouraging artists to use less compression and limiting? Well, artists are using compression and limiting in their recordings now to improve the sound of their final products, the MP3s. Um, but artists, even in the 60s and 70s, when I started recording, were using compression, but it was audio compression, not digital compression. Uh, to make their records sound louder, and the loudness wars have been going on for, there's nothing new about that. It's been going on forever. 
but the sound of records and the sound of music, if the artist wanted to compress it to make, because that's the sound they wanted, that's one thing. If they had to compress it in mastering to make it work for an MP3, they can remaster and take that off because they don't need that anymore with this as full dynamic range. We'll play back everything. An MP3 file has approximately 5% of the data of one of these 192.24 files. So they had to, f to do something. So they made everything the same volume so that everything hits hard and it's, there's no life and there's no dynamics left in the music. Uh, but it is loud. So that's, uh, that was their goal and they succeeded. Uh, one more question. Well, it's actually, the file for an album starts at 1599. All of the, uh, 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 and it goes up to 24, 25 dollars, depending on what you buy, whether it's a double album or a single album, it can go even higher. The prices are based on the prices set by the record companies. Pono is the, we're bringing it to you. We bring it to you at the price that they charge. If more people buy this and this becomes more popular, Perhaps the prices will even out and come down. It's a, it's a uh, all you have to do is look at gas prices. You know, people stop buying gas. Prices went way down. They start buying it again, the price goes up. I, the record companies set the prices. We deal with what we get and we pass it on to you. We have to make our cut because uh, we got five employees to pay. <laughs> We're huge. <laughs> I guess I have, one, I have a related question to that. Audio quality aside, what do you make of all the kind of the issues that artists have had with Spotify and you know, the whole Taylor Swift thing, people pulling their catalogs off it? Do you have a, an opinion? Uh, the, the record companies made some of the stupidest moves ever made when they made the deals that they made. And uh, they even, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things have happened that have been wrong, but they're, thank God, all tied to low res. <coughs> They're all tied to low res. High res is still the record companies, and the record companies, for whatever the technology companies have said about the antiquity of the record company mentality, the record companies are based on preserving the art, preserving the artists, and helping nurture the artists and making this happen. Most of them are like that. Not every record company, but most of them, that's their mission. And I think that if they serve the product that they have, uh, you know, just like a fruit company with great oranges, if they have organic oranges and they put them out there and they're fantastic, then everything's going great. But then one day, if they decided to take all of that out and make the oranges by Monsanto and only have like 5% of, uh, uh, of the goodness that was in them in the first place when they naturally grew, then, uh, you know, that, 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 that's just the way things go. You know, you have to be able to uh, uh, locate the quality, decide if you want it, and then support it if you want it. If you don't care, that's okay too. There's a lot of people in the world. It's okay, you just wanna be able to have what you wanna have. This gives you a chance to recognize the top drawer and to experience it and feel it and decide whether this is what you want. It's what I want. I'm, I listen to music now for the first time in 15 or 20 years. I, I couldn't listen before. I just got my first player, you know, maybe a year ago, and I started downloading about six months ago off our beta site, and when it was basically falling apart at the seams, and you know, we spent six months bringing it together and more and more together, making it more and more user friendly. Till now, I think it's, uh, well, it's definitely the best high-res uh, music download site in the world and this is the best player for high-res music in the world, and the two of them go hand in hand, and they're for music lovers, and that's all it is. I hope everybody who makes players will come to see the wisdom of using this, and uh, we're not trying to make it uh, costly or hard to get. It's just a matter of if people want it, they want it. Oh, you can't hype this. There's no reason in hyping it. You can't say, oh, that sounds better than everything else, because nobody cares. You gotta hear it. You gotta hear it and tell your friends if you like it. It's all about the people. Yeah. 
I, what was that? I didn't get, I didn't. The head, what kind of headphones would you recommend? How would you put oh. Well, I think you should use, if you use buds, you should use buds that fit in your ears. <laughs> Everybody's got different ears. Uh, we tried to figure out what bud was right for Pono. This bud's for you. <laughs> but we couldn't figure it out. I knew this was going to Everybody somewhere. has different ears. So, you know, you've got to pick out your, you know, we're going to come up with something we like, but we do like the fact that the Pono player plays back balanced output if you want it. Balanced is superior to single wire. It has two outputs. There's one for each ear. There's a difference. It's a noticeable difference in the quality. Any audio file will tell you that balanced playback is, is where it's at. So you can get balanced phones and play them back through your Pono device, um, providing your Pono device has got two outputs. Neil Young, thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs>